Hi, Caleb with Brownhouse here. Joined again with Chris from North American Rescue. And today we're going to be talking about tourniquets. Uh, pretty much quick, down and dirty, everything you need to know about tourniquets. So, uh, Chris, take us through it. All right, so here we have our combat application tourniquet in our uh, kit. So we want to put it on uh, on your extremities. That's right? so where we're going to use a tourniquet. Sure. Right? We have major bleeding. Um, the ma we might know it's major bleeding because there's a pooling uh, like if you're laying by the ground, I just got to you, there might be a large pound, uh, amount of blood. Uh, it just happened, there's a large amount of blood. It might be squirting. Uh, it might be uh, s blood soaked clothing, right? So I would need to go ahead and stop this. So I'm gonna take my injuries here. I'm gonna put it two to three inches above. We're gonna take this and put it around here. We're gonna go two to three inches above the injury. I'm gonna pull this tight. This is the most important part is going ahead and making sure this is tight. All right, we want it so that we can't flip the tips of three fingers into it. Um, if I don't take out the slack, I'll never be able to turn this windlass enough in order to take all this slack out. So, most important part, I press down. I bring this around. I leave it short of the windlass so that I can... Leave this short so that um, I, I don't have to... I can't, my windlass isn't in the way, or this is not in the way of my windlass. Right. Um, and then we're going to turn this. It doesn't matter which way, as long as we keep going the same way. So we turn this. How's that feel? Uh, it feels like the bleeding has stopped. <laughs> That's how it feels. So tourniquets hurt, right? Yep. doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Um, so uh, I go ahead and I make sure that the that it has stopped. Right. Um, if it hasn't, then I will try to uh, go another half turn and see if the bleeding stops there. Uh, the bleeding has stopped, we will say. So Thank we goodness. will finish the uh, finish the tourniquet. So we're gonna take this this tail and we're gonna slip it through here. Uh, the reason why we do that, uh, we're gonna bring the time stamp across and mark our time. The reason why we bring the tail across is so if it grabs on something, it's a little harder to come out. Um, if we leave it back here, Put this cross, and then we go to move our patient, and we lose our tourniquet. And now we're bleeding again. So we want we don't not want that to happen. Sure. Okay. So we never put it over a uh, a, a joint, so it doesn't go over the elbows, uh, doesn't go over the knees. If we're putting it on the leg, we take everything out of the pockets. Empty. You know, there's people have knives in their pocket, the wallet, cell phones, keys. We want to make sure those things are removed. If we're putting it over clothing, the best would be to put it on skin, but we can put it over clothing if need be. Yep, makes perfect sense, and uh, not for head wounds. Not that, for head wounds. Yep. All right, that's pretty All straightforward. Right. And um, you could also apply it without having to slip my arm through if the limb's caught or something. I like can. That. So there is, if uh, I, you had a, your limb is caught, I can also bring it around and just slide it in like that with using the buckle system. Easy enough. All right. Um, Another question we get a lot is uh, there's black, mine is orange. There's the exact same tourniquet. Uh, we also have a blue one that we use for training. So uh, military and law enforcement like the black ones for uh, being subdued. Right. And the uh, and the orange uh, in your uh, stop the bleed kit, your public access kits, that's what's going to be in here. Yeah. Okay. So same exact tourniquet, same way you apply it, uh, no difference. Yep. And so tourniquets generally um, one time use. One time use. Um, so if you're going to use it over and over in training, that's why we make the blue ones, and right. you could use it over and over and over in training. But yes, we never want to use whatever tourniquet we use in uh, practice for our trainings. We never want to then put that back in our kit and then uh, use it on a patient. So we we, pra we get a practice tourniquet. We're proficient at it. You take a stop to bleed class. You learn how to use one, uh, and then you, know, you leave the one in your kit alone. Yeah. So. Makes perfect sense. A good bit of information to have there. And like he mentioned, uh, get some training with it. Go to stoptobleed.org. And from there, you can find a course near you. Uh, regardless of where you are, there's, there's something out there. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube, of course. And um, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to stoptobleed.org or North American Rescue. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.